A common perception in America is that organized crime begins and ends with the mafia and such mobsters as John Gotti. But as the social makeup of our country changes, so do the people who prey on their communities for profit. Now, Asian American gangs are staking out their claim, as Ron Allen reports in tonight's Eye on America. Chinatown, New York, filled with shoppers, merchants, and filled with fear. A store shut tight, the scene of a murder. More evidence of the violence and menace just below the surface. This young mother and widow, Ying Jing Gan, saw her husband shot to death at that store. Sin Van Ta was a merchant who did something rare. He said no to the Asian gangsters who rob and extort 80% of the businesses here. He was the person with the sense of justice. He worked very hard and uh, he did everything according to the law. Last year on a street in New York's Chinatown, the police asked Mr. Ta to ID the Vietnamese gang members who were terrorizing his store. Mr. Ta was murdered two weeks after he fingered David Tai, the leader of the Born to Kill gang. I heard a gunshot. The gunshot was so close. I just turned my head and I saw my husband fell down. Gan is suing New York City for $5 million for not protecting her husband. Law enforcement do not realize uh, how much risk this individual had taken. The case, says author Peter Kwong, shook Chinatown and represents everything wrong with relations between the police and the Asian community. We see uh, the community are being victimized and yet uh, can't convince the outside world to understand, to appreciate their problems. Because, Kwong says, like this typical jewelry store robbery, it's Asian on Asian crime, and few outside the community seem to care. But this explosion last year got a lot of people's attention. For the first time, a Vietnamese gang stepped over a racial line. Members killed three and wounded 11 non-Asians after taking them hostage in a Sacramento, California appliance store. And there's more. Good evening, Mr. Gotti. As well-known mob bosses like John Gotti fall, less familiar faces like Peter Chong, a reputed West Coast crime boss, take their place, signaling a profound change in the American crime scene. As we succeed in uh, destroying the traditional types of organized crime, we don't want new groups to move into the vacuum and uh, present the same kind of a threat for the future. But many cops say the future is here. Chinese crime groups called triads have taken control of the U.S. heroin trade. Another worry for everyone. Triads are huge, centuries-old international crime groups based mainly in Hong Kong. Hong Kong police are at war with the triads, fighting them on TV. Avoid contact with triads. It's not worth it. And in the streets. U.S. authorities fear many triads will move criminal operations here before Communist China takes control of Hong Kong in 1997. Everybody has been telling us, beware of 97. Well, it's too late. They're already here. Police say one triad run by Peter Chong has already taken control of San Francisco's Asian underworld after winning a bloody war that has left five dead. It is the first Chinese triad to consolidate power in an American city. And cops like Ignatius Chin believe Chinese Americans are especially vulnerable. A lot of these people feel like the laws that law enforcement like I enforce really aren't for them. They belong to the white people's world. Which brings us back to Ying Jing Gan. She wanted to trust the white man's world. I came to the United States. Uh, it's like a dream. Uh, I thought the United States was a paradise. A paradise turned into a nightmare by David Tai, the born-to-kill gang leader. He and members of his gang were recently convicted of her husband's murder. Some say justice was done and that the streets are safer. But for how long? In New York, this is Ron Allen for Eye on America.